A young woman rents an old mansion in the middle of Wales for a year, and with difficulty she persuades a certain man to take a look at the place. Over a conversation she admits that she has begun the process of purification. For 22 weeks she does not drink alcohol and abstains from lovemaking. 27 days she eats only after sunset and at night, the next 3 days she is on a complete hunger strike. Sophie is Catholic but has some knowledge of magic, which she demonstrates with the Book of Abramelin. The man reports that he has done this three times. It's true that he failed twice, because the main thing in performing the ritual is the goal. Sophia confesses that her goal is love. Upon hearing this, Solomon leaves the house, refuses to perform the ritual and demands payment for the time spent. On the way home, Solomon speaks out. Using a Bramelin magic as a love spell is the height of folly. At the train station, Sophia names the sum, 70,000. But Solomon is adamant. It is only after exhausting all avenues that Sophia finally admits that she did all this for the sake of her dead child. It is her fault that he was taken from her, and she has to talk to him. Solomon admits that this is a good reason, and he agrees to perform the right. The couple returns to the house. Solomon negotiates the terms. It's important that Sophia understands what they're getting into. They will have to face angels and demons. The days spent in the house will be filled with exhausting rituals, sleeplessness, hunger and even ritual intimacy. And everything she read on the internet is complete nonsense. Kabbalah, which Sophia has a hazy idea of, is the knowledge of God. And they will do much darker things. The man dictates a list of necessary items and groceries and warns that once the ritual begins, none of them can leave the house until the ritual is complete. And that could take about six months. Solomon settles into one of the rooms, while Sophia looks at a picture of his son and his toy. In the morning, the man explores the house, while Sophia drives to get everything she needs. She is found in the parking lot by her sister, who tries to dissuade Sophia, as she is about to resort to black magic, but the woman is adamant. Her sister has children, and she is alone. Solomon prepares the house for the ritual and prepares himself. In the evening around the campfire, he again interrogates Sophia, trying to find out whether she speaks French well. Answering in the affirmative, he asks the same question about the German language, and he becomes very angry, suspecting the woman of lying. But she does not understand, why would she lie about such nonsense? Solomon reminds her, everything matters in this case, purity is everything, and not only in deeds, but also in thoughts. The next day, Solomon seals the house with a circle of salt, warning Sophia not to step over the circle under any circumstances until the ritual is complete. And the next morning, he very rudely wakes the woman up by pouring water on her. She should have been up long ago. Over breakfast, he tells her about magical squares. They are essentially a grid where an order of words and numbers are created, which add up to a single whole for the transition to another state. Listening to this, Sophia can't reconcile Solomon's rudeness and reminds him of who's paying for this all. The man breaks down into a shout, he doesn't care about the money. If he took on the ritual, he'll do it, and if she knows how to do it without him, he shouldn't have been invited. Yesterday was the last chance to get out, but the house is already sealed and now there is no turning back. Solomon orders her to eat the toadstool and undergo a cleansing ritual, and Sophia obeys. She vomits violently and has nightmares at night. In the morning, Solomon takes her to the hall, where he has drawn five circles on the floor with chalk. For a circle is a paradox, where there is no end but boundaries. Each circle has four phases, they need to go through them all. Five circles are five words. Today, Sophia is in the circle which symbolizes the tree. And here she isolates her being to protect herself from attack. The second circle is the passage of the song, the transference into the void and the beginning of the journey. The third one is the element of fire. The fourth one is the darkness. All of these are earth, metal, water. The cycle. And here the circle in the center is a nameless one. That's where the guardian angel will appear. And then they will be able to make their requests. But when it will happen Solomon does not know. In the next room, a triangle is drawn, which signifies the divine order, trinity. Here, it is possible to concentrate so as not to go mad. In another room is the sphere of fading, death and suppression. The square is the number 4, the perfect number. Here are its needs and weaknesses. It is here that one can gain a steely will. Later, he examines Sophia for the correctness of her understanding of the ritual taking place. 
And the woman answers correctly. Every day she performs her duties of shaving Solomon's body and reading Kabbalistic books. And the man continues her education and immersion. One day he asks her to estimate the mass of the stone and to feel its essence. But while she does this, she cannot leave the circle, not even to go to the bathroom or to eat or drink. And that will last for two days. And then they will do the same in the other rooms, six days in all. Sophia begins the ritual. Day and night she reads the spells without leaving her room. And when she's finished, she finds her room a mess. And her son's toy lies in the middle. Solomon wonders, has she heard the dog? And Sophia wonders, how will they know it started? And then a bird crashes through the window of the house and crashes to its death. This is the sign of the beginning. But Sophia doesn't believe it, it's just a bird. The next stage begins, going around in circles, each of which takes a week to complete. Solomon literally tortures the woman, pouring cold water on her and keeping her awake. The ritual reaches the point where Sophia must ask for forgiveness. But the woman flatly refuses to do so and asks that this step be replaced by another. This is when the occultist cuts her hand and fills the glass with blood. Sophia will have to drink it since she has chosen the path. After having overcome her squeamishness, the woman complies with the demand. It is a blood sacrifice that she herself wanted. Thereafter, Sophia pulls herself away for a photo with her son and discovers the toy is missing. In the evening, she strikes up a conversation about what Solomon has seen and experienced. He confesses that he has seen gods and demons, but he has not used black magic to harm others. His goal is knowledge. Time passes, and one day Sophia hears sounds. Solomon is pleased they have been heard, only they do not yet understand who they are. And from here on in, they need to be very careful. One day Sophia tells Solomon her recurring dream. She is alone on the beach and death is all around her. She walks past the bodies of her family and friends and sees a strange old woman holding her son, Jack, and she wakes up. Solomon reassures her, it's just her mind processing information. It has nothing to do with the ritual. Here he is having a dream about having a uh, moped. People laugh for the first time and the ritual begins. Later, Sophia suddenly hears the sounds again and sees the toy figure begin to vibrate. Then it falls down. The relationship between Sophia and Joseph heats up. And one day, Sophia decides to give it all up and leave. But Solomon won't let the woman out of the house and reminds her that if she crosses the line, they will both have to stay here forever. Sophia gives up but doesn't want to admit even to herself that she sees signs of things to come. And one day she finds a living flower in the hallway that simply has nowhere to go in a closed house. From that day on, her hopes rise. And somehow a rain of golden particles rains down on her. Sophia diligently follows all Solomon's orders, rewriting texts and studying books. But one day she is frustrated again, they can't make it work. Then the man demands to be told the truth at last. She has a purpose that she doesn't want to reveal. And the woman confesses she wants revenge. Her seven-year-old son was killed by the scoundrels who performed the ritual on him. Solomon is furious. He does not care what she wants. The main thing here is the truth. But it is too late to stop. The man has to find new ways. At night, he demands that Sophia go to the bathroom and get into the water and begins to drown her. The woman tries to break free, but she fails. And when she no longer resists, Solomon pulls her body out and then resuscitates her. From now on, she is another woman and the ritual continues. Sophia is furious. She pushes Solomon and he topples the knife to the floor and falls on it, wounding himself. He realizes the ritual is beginning to work. This is the work of her guardian angel. Frightened, Sophia treats the wound, in the process telling him that her son was taken right out of the kindergarten and that the kidnappers were never found. Three years have passed and the case is closed. And she admits to Solomon that she will ask Angel for the opportunity to become invisible, so she can live the rest of her life away from the world. At night, Sophia hears Jack's voice at the door, but hesitates to open it, realizing it is not him. She later confesses that she wants her son's killers to die a horrible death and be cursed forever. The man tries to change her mind. It is possible to ask for a change, but Sophia is adamant. The ritual continues, though she feels increasingly ill. To make matters worse, the lights go out. Sophia suggests stopping the ritual, but the man flatly refuses. Soon, his wound begins to fester and he vomits constantly. But one night, Sophia hears a child's voice that leads her to one of the doors. 
but she is sure it is not her son, though he convinces her to open the door. The woman refuses to do so and runs to Solomon, who confirms that this is not Jack. Time passes, Solomon begins to freeze and feels very bad, but he's not going to give up. Sophia continues to study the books and one day visibly sees someone with a cigarette sitting in a chair. She approaches him but finds only a robe on the back and a cigarette smoking on the table. The woman goes to Solomon who calls himself a servant and a warrior that demons fear, then suddenly begins to cry and confesses that he misses his sister. And Sophia feels sorry for him. In the morning she discovers that Solomon is dead. The woman rushes to her books and discovers that the weight of the entries have been crossed out so that they cannot be read. It turns out that all her sacrifices were in vain. She opens the doors and sits on the threshold for a long time, looking at the thin track of salt. Then she steps over it. The car won't start and the woman walks. She walks for a long time along a completely empty road and suddenly finds herself in front of her house again. Once inside the house again, Sophia finds demons that have arisen because of her disobedience, dragging Solomon's corpse and trying to capture the woman. She runs away from the evil spirits, but they are waiting for her in every corner. She locks herself in her room and hears Jack's voice again. Sophia repents to the voice, speaking of her guilt to the son. She should have picked him up, but she was with a man. And now she misses him and is very sorry. The voice hopes that she asks for his forgiveness. But Sophia promises revenge, and then the voice confesses that he is just some creature speaking in his son's voice to scare her. But Sophia already knows this and goes quietly to sleep. In the morning she comes out of her room and sees her son's toy lying in the middle of the hallway. It's caught after all. The demons take her to the basement and begin torturing her by chopping off her finger. The bloodied woman breaks free and walks to the stairs, which is illuminated by a light which Sophia sees and begins to beg for forgiveness. She is left and quietly walks upstairs, where the majestic figure of the guardian angel stands in the center circle. The woman is overwhelmed by the beauty of the moment, and instead of revenge she asks for the strength to forgive. The angel smiles. After a while, Sophia buries Solomon in a pond and drives away in her car. She has no finger, but there is peace in her soul. It's a rather complicated film. If at the beginning you feel sad about Sophia losing her son, then by the end the feeling changes because she was supposed to pick up her son at a certain time, but she didn't show up because she was with a man. She's not going to ask him for forgiveness, but wants revenge. And she did not go to the ritual because of love for the child, but because of guilt. So without being honest even to herself, it is difficult to count on heaven's forgiveness.